This is a 23,000 ton icebreaker. But why doesn't it sink when it hits the ice, while the Titanic, which even displaced over 50,000 tons, sank? The most significant difference between a normal ship and an icebreaker is the shape of the hull. Of course, the hull is fundamentally reinforced at the bow, stern, and waterline that is everywhere it meets the ice surface, and then covered with special polymer materials that minimize friction. But the shape changes how the ship hits the ice, and that makes all the difference. The hull is rounded at the front, like the back of a spoon. Instead of pushing against the ice head-on, the ship slides onto the ice and then breaks through it from above with its enormous weight. The shape is perfect for icebreakers, but bad for normal ships because they glide through the water less efficiently and are also more affected by waves. In order to be able to push the icebreaker onto the ice, you need a lot of energy. That's why the icebreakers are more powerful than normal ships of comparable size. Russia's nuclear-powered Arctica-class icebreakers, for example, have an engine power of over 70,000 horsepower, almost as much as the gigantic Ever Given, which displaces 265,000 tons. The propulsion of icebreakers is not designed for high speed, but rather a lot of power at low speed, which is achieved by a special gearbox and several propellers. They also have a strong reverse gear in case they get stuck. 